Um, what's up, everybody? It's Teddy, the Caravan Film Crews. So I totally understand this channel, you know, videography-wise, looks like trash, straight trash. But, you know, I'm only trying to give out uh, value in terms of how to build your videography and photography business. Uh, one note to make is that if I mention something for videography, uh, or I mentioned something for photography, and I don't say both of those words, uh, typically it can apply to both. And, you know, this is just the things that I've learned doing my business, building my business from less to nothing um, into what it is today, which is doing all right. Um, and you can take these concepts, you can apply them in a way that works for you, you can tweak them, uh, you can improve on them and make them better. Um, I'm just giving this out, you know, as a way to let people know um, who are starting out, who don't really have a grip on how they're going to do it, but really want to do it badly um, and want to build their videography and photography business to where they're doing it full time. And even if you're doing it half time, you know, part, uh, part time, I should say, um, and you want to just make more money doing videos and taking photos, that's something you can also uh, do using some of the tips, tricks, and hacks that um, I try to provide here. So today we are going into um, pricing, or I should say, you know, how to land more gigs part two. Um, and this is... All right, so like the last video, I mean, if you didn't watch part one, you really should watch part one. But one of the things I did in part one was talk about how to make yourself known. Or I, I didn't say necessarily how, or I gave some tips on how to make yourself known, but I didn't really talk about, you know, exactly how to make yourself known. And so that's what I'd like to go over today. I know uh, some people here, uh, business, you know, um, related topics and people discussing them and really want that like step by step how does this how is this gonna work and uh, so w what we're gonna do is uh, go over exactly how to go and procure clients in a number of different number of different ways um, I think the first thing to do is to tap your uh, network if you reach out to people that you know or if you use your Facebook or your uh, Instagram uh, pages to uh, market your own videography and photography business like that's one way you can get gigs you can definitely offer um, discounts to a ton of people uh, you could do like I said a bunch of free stuff just to make yourself known just so that you know people have an idea of what it's like to work with you um, and then go from there. And typically the conversations go like this. Um, So-and-so or such-and-such -such reaches out um, and asks you if you do X kind of project. You say yes or you say no, but I'd love to do it. Um, you talk about, you know, what exactly they need. Maybe they need a one-minute video, a 30-second. Maybe they need a five-minute video. Maybe it's an hour video. Maybe they need a video with a Ferrari in it. Maybe they need one with a pit bull or a poodle. Or they need a video playing tennis or basketball. Or you have to shoot a 30-second video, but uh, each of the 10 seconds that it's going to take to piece it together is in three different cities, you know, an hour and a half away from each other. I don't know. But these are the different kinds of um, projects that may pop up. And once you nail down all those details... I would suggest getting off the phone and telling them you'll get back to them. You'll consider what um, you've, what they've told you, and you're going to now tailor a quote exactly to what they want, right? Because that's what you want to do is give them what they're asking for, um, and then from there you give them a quote. They say yeah, and they pay it, and blah 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 blah, or um, they buck at it and you ask them well why what what is it you know what did you want to do uh so let's say they say something ridiculous like well we were just thinking that we could pay you fifty dollars to do an hour video or whatever it is 
Um, and you say, well, no, I can't because it is going to take this and this and this, and we provide this and we do that and blah, blah, blah. And then they say, oh, well, I didn't really know all of that was involved. Or, or they say, I was looking for something simpler, meaning that, well, would it be okay if you didn't do all that? And technically, yeah, you could totally shoot that video not doing those things that you know will make that video good. But um, as I said in part one, if you can't add it to your portfolio, it is absolutely a waste. So at that point, I, I, I'm the type of person like I will not chase a client down too hard, especially if I've already given you a price and your only drawback is that, you know, you don't feel like spending that much and you're trying to get me to do it at a lower quality so that you could still stay within your budget. Like, I don't want to do that. Um, I don't like that kind of that kind of conversation. Um, but technically you could do a lesser job, but you won't be able to provide, you know, or add it to your reel. So you have to make the decision. Either you're going to do the project at that price, but you're going to do it at, you know, great anyway, or you are not going to do the project. And I think that um, that's a tough decision to make, depending on where you're at financially. I mean, if you just need to make like 300 bucks this month and you you'll be cool uh that's all you got left and it's the 28th and somebody comes in and they want you know um a 10 hour shoot and they only got 300 bucks to do it like and then it looks like you got to do that dude uh but if you do have the option if you do have the luxury to uh turn it down I, man turn it down and i know that's kind of contradicting what i said from making yourself known but Making yourself known works if you're able to do um, that quality project, you know, at whatever budget or no budget that they're offering. Like, that's what I'm saying. Your only two options is you're either going to do it at the budget that they set or you're going to walk away. And if you walk away, um, sometimes, like it's happened to me before, sometimes um, they'll go and shop around to other videographers whose work or photographers whose work may not be as strong and then they just come back to you anyway and they end up paying what you asked for um worst case scenario they're like look man you know could you do it for like a hundred bucks less than what you quoted me or you know some kind of discount or whatever um and you know you it's up to you like if you want to do that at that price cool if you don't then don't do it um but that's how that will go typically in almost any kind of sales scenario on any way that you got the sale or got the conversation to even make the sale. The next thing is I'd say me personally, I like Craigslist. I think Craigslist is a super hustle that um, you can totally, you know, drum up business on. And uh, what it takes is monitoring it um every day like if i lived in new york where well, i'm from jersey right so if i lived in new york new jersey that northern new jersey area um there'd probably be a ton of gigs all over the place tons of opportunity to do videography photography um and whatnot and you know i'd probably check craigslist maybe two or three times a day um just so that i'm one of the first people that hop on there but um if I was in like a, a, a smaller city like Sacramento where I am, um, you know, I, I check it like once a day, maybe twice a day if I have the time to check it that second time. But um, what you do is you type in, you go to, uh, uh, what do you call it? You go to gigs and you type in videography, videographer, photography, or photographer. You can even type in filmmaker, but that's how you do the search, dude. Like, you, I, I don't know how other people are doing it, but if you're not typing in each one of those terms to try to see what gigs are popping up, you're missing out on gigs that are there that are waiting for you to hop onto. Um, and so, so from there, do not, do not send a one sentence like, you know, intro, like, yeah, I can do the job. Here's my reel. Here's my number. No, like, man, the, all right, I'm going to explain it 
it, or I'm going to I'm going to correlate that with this concept that everybody needs to wrap their head around. Um, and, you know, the experience of making a purchase is just as important as the purchase that's being made. If somebody's spending, look, I don't care, you know, like 400 bucks is not a lot of money, but it is a lot of money, especially when you're buying something that you don't know, right? Like you, we can't show our clients what they're getting until we go and shoot it and cut it up and give it to them. They're not going to see, they don't know what they're buying, right? And so the only way that they can be comfortable buying is if they um, have a firm grasp on what's being sold. And there's a, um, but the experience, right, of making that purchase is like everything that you have, the only thing that you have up until they actually buy, okay? The experience of making the purchase is the only thing you can actually sell that's tangible, that's real, that they can feel right now. And there's a, an artist, Danny Scheibel, um, the creator of Tapeagami, he told me this story. And um, he says there's an there's a artist, like a famous artist, I don't know her name, but um, she is super rich. She sells her work for a ton of money. And when she got super rich, uh, she went and moved out to the middle of nowhere somewhere, I don't know. Um, and she has her work up at her place and her place is her showroom. It's her art room. And, um, what she does is she has these two guys that are out in the world, all over the world, and they get paid very well and they party and they go out and have fun and eat and do all kinds of stuff that, you know, people with money would do in order to run into people with money. And, um, when I say money, like people who have a couple million to spend on some art. And so you cannot buy her art, nor I, I don't think you can even visit her showroom unless you run into one of these two guys. And these guys will not let you know that they're these guys until they like you, like from the conversation and everything. They like you and they're like, hey, you know what? I got something to share with you. And, you know, from there... They collect a $2 million deposit. I mean, these guys are salesmen, right? So from there, they collect a $2 million deposit. And then you fly out to this middle of nowhere place. Nobody goes to. And that's how you're able to buy her art. And I think that because that's how the sale is made, uh, her art is increasing in value, you know, even after they buy it. I think $2 million is like plenty to buy for a painting. Uh, not to say it's not worth anymore, but... I think she's comfortable taking two million and uh, there's probably some equity in it even when they buy it. So it's crazy. But they're willing to spend that money on a painting because of the experience of buying. And so, you know, I don't care if somebody spent 200 or 500 or 1,000 or 10,000 or 20,000 on your video project. Um, you need to make that experience worth whatever they're spending. Just the experience of buying it. So... If ever you're going to send somebody an email or whatever, like any kind of initial contact, what you want to do is you want to have a greeting like hi or good morning or good afternoon or hey, how's it going? Or, um, you know, uh, I'm so and so and such and such with this company or blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you want to say, first of all, thank you for considering me for the project, dude. They don't have to think of you at all. There's like so many videographers and photographers out there. Nobody has to consider you for the project. It, it, just because you reached out, like it doesn't, doesn't mean anything, right? Um, then the next thing to do is talk about um, the project itself. Like, okay, what are the benefits and features that you're going to add to, um, you know, the, the video or, or that you're going to provide, I mean, in the production, whether it's videography or photography, like what, what makes you special? What are you bringing to the table? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then you can say, let's talk about it. Um, but you know, you don't say it like that. You say things like, I would love to, um, have a quick chat, 10 to 15 minutes, um, with you on the phone or in person to where we can discuss the details a little further. That way I can really, uh, be able to see what you envision for this project in a way that makes it beneficial for you to have me do it, right? Like something like that, okay? Um, 
but and then you say you know take a look at my work here it is and you lay it out I mean you could say go to my website like dude you could say that you know but I'd rather somebody just lay it out for me what they want me to see so if it's maternity shots I really just want to see maternity shots if it's you know baby photos I just want to see baby photos if it's weddings I just want to see weddings if it's corporate stuff I just want to see corporate stuff I don't want to have to go on your website and fish around and I think some people think that well wow if you look at my website and it looks real cool and blah 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 or you see all this other kind of work that I did that it's gonna help my situation but no this is the sale it's not about you it's about them and they're gonna go to your website anyway if they're considering hiring you so when you're on Craigslist or anything like you wanna give some detail play nice you know um, be polite make some small talk make that experience of uh, just working with you like from the gate from the very first word that they get from you already be a pleasant experience that alone will separate you from a ton of other people dude I they're getting um, all right look your client is getting emails like a ton of them all right your client is getting a ton of emails when they post their ad on Craigslist or their request on Craigslist they're getting a ton of emails a ton of messages from people and they're like these one-liners they're like so just dry man they're terrible um, and they, they like those guys are not selling the experience of buy, of working with them or whatever and I know because I've posted this stuff to try to get videographers and photographers to hire and I know like this is what happens every time this is what they do and so um, so yeah like that's how you want to go after it but um, make sure in your email that you cover the points that are important to them uh, make sure that you repeat what they posted in the ad and that you can do each one of those things uh, Three-point lighting setup got it. I could do it uh, shooting 4k got it. I could do it uh, have professional sound I could do that, you know, and you want to just like Itemize like take basically take care of their concerns. You want to make it very clear No assumptions needed you want to make it very clear that you can do the job that they want you to do if they described it in the email already um, and then you know from there who knows what's gonna happen I, like I did a, I picked I answered like a $1,500 ad in Monterey like the ad I don't know why but the ad was placed in Monterey I answered it it was a $1,500 ad um, for three days worth of work which is crazy to me but for 1500 bucks and I didn't have anything to do for three days plus I was gonna be in Monterey so I was like oh you know what I'll do it turns out I was actually not in Monterey I was in like Redwood City um, and it wasn't it was like 1500 bucks for the, the three days but there was another 10 grand in editing work that came behind it and so that three days worth of work that was 1500 bucks actually turned into a total of eleven thousand five hundred dollars of work and, and you know some recurring work that occurs after that and just trying to make myself known you know if if somebody's having trouble finding a videographer a photographer in Monterey I wanted to be the person out there being able to cover it and I, I answer everything on Craigslist I think the limit or the furthest I'm gonna go is like a four-hour drive three and a half four hours out I might pass you know depending on what it is if it's a pretty good if you're at least paying me my rate if you're at least giving me 1500 bucks for the day you know I'm gonna come out there and even if it's four hours away especially if it's like a a one-man band kind of thing and I can just pay my editor or one of the editors to edit it or I can edit it myself whatever um, but that's how I look at it and uh, you know but Craigslist is one check multiple times a day uh, gig salad and um, what's that other one um, there's another one gig salad and there's like some gig sites out there I forgot the name of this other one I, I don't remember because I don't think I've gotten any gigs from that but gig salad I've gotten a ton of gigs from um, and I don't think gig salad is doing much marketing but if you're in like a sleepy town with not a lot of stuff going on have a gig salad account you only have to pay when they book you and it's a certain fee or whatever like 20 percent or like I don't know 10% or something like that of the booking fee um, and then from there 
and you can have the client pay it too. Like you don't have to pay it every time. Um, but I've gotten a bunch of gigs from that and uh, gigs that paid well. Um, but I think one site that a lot of people don't use is Thumbtack. And I mean, I could do a whole video on Thumbtack. I'd actually have James uh, in the video with me too, talking about it because it's a it's definitely a two man job to really attack Thumbtack like that. But um, we're on there. Thumbtack is a site that gets a ton of gigs. Oh my God. So many gigs come through Thumbtack all the time, all the time. Um, and it takes a while before you get used to reading what um, requests for quotes, um, RFQs, what RFQs are coming in that are not worth it. It takes a little bit of time to like, you know, wrap your head around how to weed through that. But once you do, um, you can kind of pick the ones that are worth responding to. And the reason why you have to do that is because you got to pay like three to seven bucks per gig. And I know a lot of videographers or photographers don't want to do it or try to just like hit one or two every once in a while. Or they think that, you know, if I just spend this money on this one, I, you know, I might get it and it's worth it because it's my price or whatever. Right. Um, but one secret I'd love to give you guys about Thumbtack is that one, um, you're probably not going to get hired if you don't respond to a ton of gigs. I, we set out a budget. I think so far we've spent like maybe a thousand bucks um, on Thumbtack and we've only been on it for like two months, maybe that. Um, but we've also landed, uh, I think we're almost like a 10 grand worth of gigs. So it's worth it for us. Um, and you know but you, you follow the same thing that you did on craigslist like that's how you still got to go out it you got to play nice your portfolio has to be on there like everything has to look good it's it's a lot of work just in prep and just in setting up all this stuff um but uh on thumbtack if you're hitting up as many gigs as you can chances are you're gonna get some and they're gonna be and the, the other thing is if you're worried about the pricing if like what we do is we tell people what our price is and we tell them what they're going to get for it. And not everybody hits us back, but nobody's not everybody's going to hit you back anyway, even if you give them the price that they want, because that's what we used to do. Um, but, uh, you know, when when you do that, when you tell them what your price is and you tell them why your price is that even if you quoted them something higher, than what they were asking for, um, they might respond to you because it's like, uh, it's the same reason why like people can get Toyotas, but they could also get a Benz. And the Benz may cost more and they could have started out wanting a Toyota, but somebody told them like, look, the new S550, it drives itself, you don't have to drive. And I think all of the 550 series and up, like the S600s, they come bulletproof. That might have been a feature and a benefit that they weren't thinking about before when they were looking at the Toyota because they were just like, you know what, I'm just going to get from A to B. That's all I want to do. But if they thought about it and they were like, well, you know what, I would spend 80 grand on a self-driving car. That would be tight. Plus, it's a Benz, right? And so people would totally jump up from that. I asked Carl, car salesman. People come in with their budgets and they're like, oh, I only want to spend like 15000 on a car. Car salesmen will jack that price up all the way. They'll show them this other car that's worth twice as much. And people will jump on it because they just don't know why they need to pay more. And that's the key. Like if you're educating your client, if you're explaining why your price is your price, you'll probably get it. They probably have the money to spend. Uh, especially if you're going after a wedding or if you're doing like um, uh, baby photos or maternity shots or whatever, you know, they they have the money to spend another 200 bucks or 300 bucks on top of the 150 that they told you. They just don't have it for you. They don't want to give it to you. That's why they don't have it. It's because you, you don't deserve it. Like they don't know why they should give it to you. But if you can explain that in a way that makes sense to them, and they do have that budget, they'll at least inquire. And then if you can get them on the phone, man, you can close them. You can totally close them. Um, and it's, it's going to take practice. 
This is, you know, it might not be something that you get overnight or you might be a natural, I don't know. But I know the more that you do this, the better you're going to be at it and um, the more you're going to close. Uh, so, all right, we talked about tapping your network, talked about Craigslist, talked about Thumbtack. The next thing you want to do is go to like mixers and uh, business events and stuff like that. If you could be there doing the video for that, even if they didn't pay you, or the photos for that, even though they didn't pay you, I would do it, um, especially if I'm just starting out, just to get my name out there, just to make myself known. Um, and, you know, if you're doing stuff for, like, government people or uh, people who are, you know, attorneys or doctors, people who are professionals, like, those are great places to go and network because they have a lot of people that have weddings or kids that need graduation photos or... Um, you know, a ton of stuff that you can dig into that network network for if you're willing to do the work to get in there. Um, and, you know, the, the at the bottom line, you got to have a genuine concern for people when you're doing sales. It can't just be a money grub. You can't just be trying to, uh, you know, just beat somebody over the head and take their money. Um, you have to really care about people and especially the people that you're going after um, and you really got to provide for them something that they need uh, a value that is worth it to them uh, for the money that they're paying you for and if you can do that man if you can just do the right thing every time because it's always the right thing to do like Gary says you'll be good you'll be so good people will have no problem referring you they'll have no problem referring you work and, um, you know, that's it. So that's, this is sales part two. I don't think there, there's a part three, but totally could be a part three. Um, I know that with sa like sales is a lifeblood of business, uh, especially videography and photography business. You got to have sales to, uh, get the ball rolling on things. And, um, this is how you can do it. Like I said, all the time, hit me up hit me up. If you want to talk about anything, I'm available. Call, text, email, uh, DM, tweet, whatever you want to do. Comment. Um, you might think I'm full of shit or whatever. Man, go ahead. Comment it. I don't care. I'll love to respond to that. We can talk, man. I'll call you. Whatever. You want to Skype, Google Hangout. I don't care. Meet me at Starbucks. Come see me. I don't care, man. Uh, but let's... Uh, Let's connect. I'd love to collab with anybody out there if you're watching this. Um, and, yeah, I hope you can find value in these videos. I'm going to try to do a lot more of them. Um, and I hope that they help you, like, to do more work, man, and, and build your portfolio and make it strong and do dope stuff and have fun and really get the most out of your craft. So, yeah, man. Peace.